Okay, so good afternoon everyone. My name is Luisa Blanco. I am a professor of economics at the School of Public Policy. I will be talking about uh, courses in a specific, uh, discussing about the use of forums and polls. I found these resources very helpful. I've been playing with them for a couple of years now, but this semester I think I play it, I, I play especially with forums. I think this semester worked very well with the group of students that I have and I wanna share this experience with other faculty members. So pretty much, I guess, courses has been very helpful for me, and I, I first I wanna mention a little bit about how courses is really a great feature you can use. I think there are these traditional, I like to call it traditional features of courses, uh, which relate to using courses um, to post resources, um, using courses to post grades for the class, and then also something that I've been doing in the last couple of years is that I have weekly announcements about what is going on in every specific week. And I usually find that very useful for my students. For example, I'll quickly show you that. You can see here for my global economics class, uh, we pretty much have an announcement for each week. Uh, I usually send it like the week before, right? And then the students know uh, what are we covering, right? And then for example, in resources, you can also see here that I have a folder for each week, right? And then there I post um, the, the files, the PowerPoint presentations that we're using. And I found that students really like that because they, well, they're very computer savvy, right? They're always looking at the computer and they wanna know what is going on with the class so they can easily go back to, uh, to courses anytime they want, right? And they can be, okay, so what, I, what, I, what do I supposed to be doing? next week, you know, what assignment I need to submit, right? So I will say the traditional features of courses have been very useful for my classes because they really help me uh, to keep myself organized and to keep us students organized. So it's, they're great resources, right? But today, you know, I wanna tell you more about what I call more like uh, non-traditional features of, of courses, which I think are related to these, the use of technology to try to engage students in the conversation. And the reason why I try to use technology in the classroom, and, and I know maybe some faculty will relate to this, is that um, students um, are so good with technology nowadays, right? And they want their professor to use technology. I feel that it's more like a, a student-driven use of technology. And then I find that sometimes, right, technology is great uh, because the students can take notes in their laptops, right? They can access the resources I post for them. But then at the same time, right, technology can be a little distractive, right? Uh, we can see how students, it's easy for them, you know, to be in the lecture and then get a little bit distracted. So that's one thing that keeps me thinking about, well, how can I use technology to my advantage, right? Because I have to be honest, sometimes if I am at a lecture and I have my computer on, I can also get distracted. So I try not to blame the students, right? And I try to relate to them that technology is a great resource, but then at the same time, it can also be distractive, right? So I think that finding um, the way to interact with the students with technology is a great resource to keep them engaged, right? So I think something that I've been exploring with is the use of forums and polls, uh, because I think um, they are very, um, like the students feel very well with these type of resources. That's what I find out. I mean, it's, it's, it's natural to them to be working with these, with these resources. And I'll, I'll show you in more detail a little bit, right? But uh, forums, uh, I'll start talking about forums. Uh, forums have been, have been a great resource for me, for my class, because it really helped me to engage the students in the conversation in the classroom, but then also outside of the classroom. So what I figure out, especially this semester, which is a semester that I have been using forums the most, is that students really like them forums. Like students really like this form of communication, which I was very surprised of. Um, I was very surprised because they do a great job. Uh, for example, with the forums, um, well, it's very easy to use these features, right? I will say, I'll show you quickly, but uh, I'm sure if you need any assistance uh, on how to create forums and how to create uh, the polls, uh, the IT department will be great. Uh, they have been very helpful to me. So I will say they'll be helpful to you if you have any questions, but quickly, you know, I'll just show you. So usually for your course, you can see the forum feature and the poll feature, uh, the polls feature, but you have to activate that. That's not gonna come at the beginning of the semester. So you have to go to my workspace. Then here you go to worksite setup. 
then here you're going to select the course that you want to add that feature on, right? So here, for example, this is the one that I, and then I go here to edit, right? And in the handout I gave you, I kind of walk you through this so it's easier for you. I mean, it's super easy. And then you do edit tools, right? And then here you want to select forums and you want to select the poll feature here. And that's really easy, right? So once you do that, then you go to your course and you're going to be able to see it in your left hand, right? Well, with forums, it's super easy to create your own forum. Uh, pretty much the only thing you need to do is to say new forum, right? Uh, new forum, you click there, right? You write the title of your forum. Then there you can provide a description, right? But let me tell you a little bit about how, how I have found forums to be very, very helpful for me. Well, I think, at least from, for my classes, I have several ways in which I have used forums. Uh, one of the uh, features of forums is that, uh, for example, for my global economics class, I really want to make sure that my students are able to relate the material that we're learning in the classroom to the real world. So therefore, with the forums, it has been a great resource. Uh, for example, you can use these to ask students to find an article right, related to the class material and be ready to discuss in class, right? So for example, if you look here, I have um, student selected articles, right? I created that forum, right? And I say here, please add a link or a PDF uh, file for the article you will discuss in class. So I'll show you quickly some screenshots, right? I don't want to show you my students. Uh, I want to make sure you know that I protect my students' confidentiality. So I'm just going to show you here, for example, when I did that activity. So that one about, let's see. So this one is student selected articles. Let me see. So here, for example, this is the forum I created, right? And I say, Please, before, before we meet next class, make sure you post an article, right? And be ready to, to discuss briefly about uh, what is important about that article, you know, and how it relates, relates to the class material. So therefore, right, so I have that in my forum. And then here you can see all my students' contributions, right? They all put an article there, right? And then here, you know, I guess it's kind of cute that you can see their conversation too, right? I say, hey, everyone, I found this article. It's very interesting. It talks about the European Union, and I hope you enjoy it, right? And then you have other students here, you know, say, have a wonderful weekend. I mean, it's kind of like a way to communicate with the group, which I also found very interesting that it creates this new dynamic where you communicate, right? I mean, they are your classmates, it's your professor, right? So it's, a, it's this kind of, it's, it's this interaction that is, is very different that I was not as used to before. And then here, right? And then you can see how, you know, each of the students will provide their, their different uh, resource to be able to discuss in class, right? I mean, that's one of the easiest way to use it, right? And say, you know, and then when, when they go over in class, then I pull out the article that they provide me here, you know, I pull out the forum, and then we go to the resource that the student uh, share, and then the student, the student will discuss in class that article, right? So then, for example, I mean, this was uh, one of the most interesting experiences with my students using the forums. So here at Pepperdine, we had the Council of American Ambassadors, and it was a conference, right? And we made it a class activity. So I thought the forum was a great opportunity for me to learn uh, what they learn at this council. And then also, you know, well, you know, I, I, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't pass role at the council, right? So this was a great opportunity for me to say, well, you know, once we, once you attend the council, I want to get your feedback and see what you learn, right? So here, for example, I say Council of American Ambassadors, right? And they, they went there, and then here, I just kind of give them these questions, right? And say, well, you know, what was your, uh, what, what caught your attention there? You know, actually, this, this conference was about North Korea, so it was very focused on North Korea. So we got a wonderful conversation. The students did a great job, you know, talking about, well, you know, at this conference, I learned this and this and this, right? And then some students were, well, you know, I think, and, and I mean, it got super interesting. I even shared with, uh, with the dean, of course, without the student's name, you know, because I thought the conversation and, and their insights on the issues around North Korea were really good. You know, it was, it was actually, I think they, my students really surprised me with this assignment. Then, for example, another, way in which I use this is, uh, well, in global economics, right, we're very interested about trade policy. And we had the presidential debates, right? So therefore, I wanted my students 
to reflect on the presidential debate that was related to foreign policy. So what I did, right, I posted a link, well, I posted as a PDF um, the, the transcription of the foreign policy debate. And then I, I told the students, right, there were these two, three questions. I guess I focused on two questions from the presidential debate. And I say there were these two questions that they were brought up to the candidates, right? Um, give me what do you think about their answers, right? Uh, how would you answer that question if you were running for president, right? And actually, you know, it was so interesting to see their, their, the students' response in this activity, right? Then another example that worked very good was here. For example, here. Now, you know, I did this, po I did this forum like on week, I guess it was, uh, it was last week, right? Um, well, November 13, right? So it was just a couple of days ago, right? And we're really kind of wrapping up the semester, right? We're getting to the point that we really want to put together the big idea of what we have learned, right? So therefore, I create this forum and say, you know, what do we, exp what do you think about trade policy? Like, what do you think is going to happen in the future, right? Um, what do you see, what do you think are the benefits and costs of free trade? I mean, kind of wrapping up things, right? And I was also very, 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 um, delighted that my students learned so much. I mean, I was, I was so surprised, you know, about how much they're able to, to communicate in this type of, of setup. For example, I guess I'll, I'll show you something that, I was, that amazed me. Um, let's see, for example, I have here, for example, this one, right, from the presidential debate, right? So let's see. So here I had the presidential debate, right, and I wanted, I wanted the students to reflect on each candidate's uh, policy uh, in terms of foreign policy and, and trade policy, right? And then, right, so I got all the students' contributions. I mean, everyone participated, right? And then here you can see this is one contribution I got. And I was so surprised, especially because they, they have these very complete and complex answers that sometimes when I assign something, you know, and it's a homework that they have to submit to me, I don't see them doing this, you know, so I, I was, I was so, I guess their, their answers were really, really good, you know, especially I saw how using this form to communicate was different than just doing a homework, right? And I realized that they communicate very different in this type of setup than if I asked them, write this essay and submit it to me. So, so it was actually a very nice surprise. I really like it. I think students um, these days uh, really like this form of communication. I think it's very natural to them to do this type of blogging. So, so this is more like an informal talking, right? So they feel that they are talking to their friends, they are talking to the professor, right? But in a more informal way. And you can learn a lot about what they have learned. So, so that's, that's, that was actually, I, I really enjoyed their, their conversations, right? So I mean, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll show you just a couple more here, right? Oops, no. Yeah, I was going to show you. I mean, that was a very good conversation that we had, right? That was a very good contribution of one of the students, right? And then you can see that, um, so this is one of the students, right? This is another student, right? And then this is another student, right? So, and you can see how they really want to expand on their ideas, right? I mean, they really have something to say. And if you read it carefully, they do. I mean, and they have learned a lot in the class. So I really like this. This tool has been a, a great discovery for me. Okay, so then about the forums. So I guess I'll, I'll go over the polls, how I use them in the classroom, and then I kind of wrap up with some recommendations of what has worked for me, what hasn't worked too well, right? And then, and then we'll, we'll wrap it up. This is kind of like a short session. Well, polls, the polls, I also find them very useful for communicating with the students and keeping them engaged. Uh, for the polls, I like the polls, and especially in economics, we usually have issues that you're gonna have two sides always, right? I mean, it's very, very, in economics, you always will have people in one side of the debate and then people in the other side of the debate. And I like the polls because we can have this conversation, right? We can explore both sides of the debates, right? And with the poll, right, we can get the student engaged because the student is going to say, this is where I stand, right? So I'm, I'm going to be in this side or I'm going to be in this side, right? And then in the classroom, we can talk about both sides of the debate, right? So for example, in the Global Econ class, there was this debate I got from the Economist website, um, the, the Economist magazine, right? That there was this debate about uh, whether we should try to make trade fairer instead of free freer, right? 
And here, I guess that dynamic was to try to ask the students this question before we had a debate in the classroom, right? And then once we had the debate in the classroom, I wanted them to answer what do they think, right? This activity worked a little bit not too well because I remember I had a problem when I was creating the poll, right? So but here, for example, I asked them, you know, do you see like not a lot of people voted before the debate because I think there was some confusion, right? But I was saying, I was asking them the question, right? And then we ended up with 40% agreeing and then 60% disagreeing. But then, you know, after we had the debate in the classroom, right, so we had um, a group of students debating on one side and then another group of students debating on the other side, then I wanted, I wanted them to go over the poll, right, and then see what do I find, right? And I guess here I find similar results here, around 60% agree and around 36% disagree. For the poll, right, it's very easy to create, right? You just say here, add, and then you start like going over, right? And you kind of follow it. It's very, very friendly, but I'm sure the IT group can help you if you have any specific questions. But for example, like in the last couple of weeks, right, we've been talking about these polls related to people perceptions towards trade. And I did, for example, this poll, right, where I asked people, and actually these questions, are from an article from the Wall Street Journal, right? In 2010, they, they, they collect this data and they ask people how they feel about trade. And I was telling my students, you know, I've been looking for similar surveys for this year, but I haven't seen it. So I guess I'll, I'll poll you, you know, and see what do you think, right? And then we did this poll, for example, where, you know, free trade agreements, right? Just exactly the same question we saw in the Wall Street Journal article, right? It says, have helped the U.S. or have, have hurt the U.S., right? And then here, you know, I found that 93% of my class thinks that free trade agreements have helped the U.S., right? And here, right, that's related to a conversation we had in the class about the benefits and costs of trade, right? So it's interesting to see, well, you know, at the end, you know, how students feel about trade. Then, for example, I guess these last two questions were very fun for me to do. So in this one, right, I ask the students, right, and again, these are similar questions to a survey online, right? The, this one is to, add, to ask the students, right, from the following list of countries, which country do you think is the economic power today, right? And it was very interesting to see, right, that in my students' perspective, uh, we see the United States, right, with a 56%, but China, was standing pretty high, 44%, right? Actually, when looking at this survey online, which was done in 2010, China wasn't that high, you know? So it was interesting to see how my students feel about China, right? And then, you know, say, well, you know, but what do you think about the future, right? So just kind of asking them, right? Looking ahead 20 years from now, which one of the following countries do you think will be the world leading economy, right? And then here we can see that China, right? 75% of my students really think that China will be the leading economic power, right? And again, right, you have these polls, right? And then you can get the conversation going, right? Well, why do you think that China is gonna be this economic power, right? Why do you think it might not be the case, right? That China is, why, why, why we might not see that China being the economic power, right? Why we might see the United States, right? So it really brings this conversation, it gets the students involved, it's very natural to them. For example, I, rem I, I, I remember that that day that we were doing these surveys, um, these polls, one of my students didn't have a computer. I said, oh, you know, you, you, you want to do it. You don't have your computer. And she's like, oh, I can do it in my cell phone. No problem. And then she just pulled out her cell phone and it starts doing the poll, you know. I said, okay, you know, it's great. And I mean, and they really want to be part of the poll. So, so it's very interesting to see how technology is very natural to them. I mean, it's, it's nature and, and they are really good at the technology. So, so that's why these tools have been very useful for me. So today, you know, I, I, I taught this class, Global Economics, this morning, and I told them I was going to be here with, with you guys talking about how to use these resources, you know, and I asked the students, you know, can you give me any feedback, uh, any recommendations, right? And they, they actually were very insightful. Uh, first, you know, they say, well, as a feedback, you know, they, most of them told me that they really like this form of communication. They find it, like, very fun for them and very easy for them. So they say, yeah, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's something we really enjoy doing, you know. Then they say, well, it's also very helpful for us to be able to express in this form because we think about our answers and then we have them here. And then when we are in the discussion, 
we feel more comfortable talking about that because we already thought about it and we already wrote about it. So therefore, it makes it makes them more comfortable. And especially, you know, if the students are shy, especially for shy students, this type of tool is very helpful, right? Because some of them, right, are shy to speak up, right? But if they already wrote their answer here, right, then they they feel more comfortable, right? So so they actually told me that they find it a, a good resource, right? And then something that I found, and I need to get better at that, I think I'm still working with this tool and I'm still learning, is that a lot of my students told me, well, you know, I like to look at what other students have said, right? I haven't really assigned them to kind of ask questions to each other, which is kind of like the next step I want to take, right? Kind of like having more like, okay, make sure you reply to someone or, or do a reflection on what someone else say. But my students are already doing it because my students told me this morning, well, I usually, when I write my answer, I kind of want to see what the other people have said and then, you know, try to contribute something different to the conversation. I say, oh, this is great, you know, so you guys are really learning from each other, you know? So I thought that was very interesting that they told me that this morning. Then something, you know, I say, well, what are your recommendations? And then they say, well, you know, and, and I have to blame myself a little bit. They say, well, you know, it would have been helpful if you have trained us a little better uh, on how to use them because it's a little bit cumbersome when you go in first, you know. I say, yeah, I guess you're right. I need, I need to train you better. I cannot let you on your own to, to be able to do it. And, and they did a, a great job, but they say, yeah, you know, I guess a little bit of training will help. Then they say, um, please don't overuse it because if you overuse it, it's not going to be fun for us anymore, right? So, for example, in this semester, as you can see on the list of my, especially for the forums, right? You can see that I did one, two, three. So three of contributions, and then I did one of articles, right? So they say, well, that seems kind of enough. We are kind of trying to say we're going to have one more because it's a lot of fun, and, and we really want to have one more to wrap up the semester, right? Uh, but they say, yeah, you know, one more will be great, but he says, don't, please don't overuse it because then it's not going to be fun for us anymore, right? And then another important observation um, that they gave me is that this is fun, the forums are fun for us because we can relay them to the real world or we can relay them to us. But if you make the forum too focused on the class material and too technical, then it's not going to be fun and we're not going to like it. And I say, okay, you know, that's a great observation. You know, you kind of have to think about the forums about something that you're going to make it more applied because otherwise, you know, it would be hard for them to contribute, right? And it, w it, w it wouldn't be fun. It's just going to be busy work, right? So that's one thing that I found very insightful from them today when I was talking to them about this tool. And then... Um, and then something they say that they like is that I always give them enough time to think about this. So I kind of tell them, for example, I will say today in class, right? So we want to talk about uh, the U.S. trade policy in the presidential debates, right? I'll pause the forum today and I'll give you a week to be ready to answer. They say they like that because then if I give them enough time, they can be thinking about how they're going to answer that question. Which I was like, oh, you know, this is great, you know. So, so if you give them time, they actually provide more insightful answers to, to, to the questions you, you give them, right? But overall, it has been a great tool for me. I think I, I, I enjoy very much reading what they have, um, do, what, what they provide here in the forums. I think their comments are very insight, insightful. Another recommendation I will give that work very well with me is that I read their comments. I make notes in their comments, kind of trying to see, well, this student touched on this issue, this student touched on this issue, this student touched on this issue. And then when we come to the classroom, I kind of try to direct their conversation on the different issues that I thought were relevant and kind of try to make connections between what one student say and what other students say. And I actually found that very effective. And I actually found that students really like that because it's kind of like a pride, like, okay, my professor read my comment and she's going to choose something that I say there that she thinks is relevant. So I found that it actually works better when the professor, when the professor spends time to reflecting on their answers and try to bring the conversation in the classroom based on what the professor thinks can, can, can help to make the conversation going, kind of direct the conversation based on, on their students' contributions in the forums, right? So, but I think maybe we'll have like, if you guys have any questions, I have like maybe two, three minutes of questions, right? Uh, it's a great resource um, 
please make sure you contact IT and I'm sure they can give you a tutorial. Uh, you know, online, there are also tutorials online that you can access, right? Uh, but, but for me, it has been a great resource. I have discovered uh, that my students are learning a lot and I actually feel that this has been a great exercise and I'm very happy that, I, um, that I'm using it uh, for this course and I hope I continue to use it and I continue to learn how to use it effectively because I think I'm still learning, so. Thank you. What's the balance that you've found between, um, say you were talking about written essays that you've had them turn in mm -hmm. versus using the form? Was it just kind of like, just find, how have you found that rhythm between using the form for them to respond to mm -hmm. the specific questions versus like essays that you're having them write? Yeah, I mean, I still have the homework portion of the class, you know, where they have to write essays and answer to me, and I still have the exam portion where they have to write essays, right? I think if you want to use the forums, it's more for conversation and discussion in the classroom, at least for me, that's the way that it works. So you kind of have to keep this balance and say, well, you know, if I'm going to use the forums more for in-class discussion, at least that's how it works for me, right? And then keep a balance in the sense that um, what my students told me today, right? Don't overuse it, because then if you overuse it, then it's it's not gonna be fun for us anymore. So I will say that, you know, when it, so I wouldn't, uh, yeah, I mean, here you see that I haven't used it that much and probably if I do another forum for, for the final week, which I want because it's fun and my students are already thinking about what they wanna do the last forum on and, and they're giving me some ideas. That's, that's actually very interesting that they, they like it and they are saying, oh, you know, we should talk about this. Um, I really wanna be careful that I'm not overusing this and, and, and I don't make this like busy work for them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's more like a learning experience for everyone. But you're right, I mean, the balance is uh, it's hard and it depends from professor to professor, I think. But I will suggest to use this more as a conversation going instead of making it more like a homework part. Do you find them making connections with like how they're responding in the forums and how that contributes to the discussion versus say if they've had an essay or written assignments, homework assignments mm -hmm. due, and then they've come to class mm -hmm. with sort of yeah. the same discussion in mind, have you found like a, a relationship with, between those two, whether or not they're more responsive after they've done a form to this blog kind of response versus when they've been working on more formal writing? Yeah, that's, that's a good observation. I feel that this blog, I mean this, because it's kind of like a blogging, yeah. right? Yeah. It makes it more comfortable to talk in the classroom. It makes them more comfortable to bring ideas in the classroom, right? And it kind of complements like more the formal essay writing that you do in a homework or that you do in a test, right? So it's kind of like a complement. What I do in my class is that I have a percentage of my grade that goes towards participation. Okay. And if I keep doing this, I will probably maybe increase the percentage that I give on participation because if I can see that they are really learning, you know, through this tool, then, then that's, that's great. But no, I do see that the dynamics change where the student feels more comfortable and more, 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 more. I guess they, they feel more comfortable to, to engage in the conversation in the classroom. So at least that's my perception. But then I can say that it also depends on the group you have, right? I mean, I guess I feel that I have used this tool before a little bit in other classes, and it hasn't worked as well as this year, and it actually has to do with the mix of the students you have as well. So I wouldn't be surprised that if I try this again next semester and I get a different mix of students, I'm not sure how it's gonna work. I mean, I'm not sure if I'm gonna get this as much as, as insights. I mean, I don't know if it's gonna work as well as it's working this semester, so, but I'll give it a try, you know? I guess I'll give it a try and then see how it goes. I assume the students can identify each other's comments by yes. name. Yeah. Do they get to monitor the poll at all, or is that only for you? No, they get the results. So usually with the poll, you have the option to make the results available to students after they submit their vote, or you, at the day of the uh, the day of you close the poll, so the students are able to see it. I usually show it in the in the board, right? Kind of like the way that I show it to you, and then we kind of go over the results. And, oh, you know, this is surprising. You know, a lot of people think that China is an economic power nowadays. You know, so um, so no, the students get the poll results, and then something good point that you raise, uh, uh, thinking about this idea of students being able to read other students, right? For example, when I talk about the presidential debates, you know, I was very clear in my assignment, right? I say, well, let's make sure we have a conversation about politics in a respectful way and that we agree and disagree together. You know, I think with this forum, it's also important to 
to um, to emphasize to students right that it's a great tool and that but we need to make sure that we are respectful and that we we might be able to this I mean it, it will be good to to disagree right and let's just make sure we do it respectfully so so I think that's another good point that we need to emphasize when we use this type of tools it's for the forums mm -hmm. good question yeah have you been able to compare your students who maybe use this poll mm -hmm. versus your the students that yeah. maybe not well, I notice, especially in my macroeconomics class that I teach in the spring, I start using the polling. I guess now I have a couple of years using the polls. Um, I found, especially, like, I do the polls for that class more towards the end of the semester when we talk more about the debates in, in, in terms of macroeconomic policy. But I found that they really like it. I mean, I guess I haven't been able like, to look at their grades or anything, but I found that um, at the end of, I, I found that they feel more engaged. So they do the poll, right? And I usually like do, okay, I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes to do the poll right now. And they just go in their computers, you know, and they do the poll and like, okay, everyone. And they're like, oh, hold on, hold on, you know, I'm still doing it, I'm still doing it. So then, you know, and then once they do it, then I show the, the results on the, on, on the board, right? And then a lot of people say, oh, interesting, you know? So, so, so in some way I feel that they, once I introduce the polls, I feel them more engaged. And then they, it's not only me lecturing, but it's more like, okay, I wanna see what you have to say. I wanna see the feeling about the class, right? And then also, you know, I think they like to see how, I mean, they also wanna see how their students, how the other students think. You know, they also wanna see, okay, so who thinks that China is gonna be the economic power? Oh, 50% of the class thinks that. Oh, interesting, you know, so, so I think I, it helps to engage them. And, uh, so yeah, just to keep them engaged, I have seen a difference. Like if I just talk about these different economic debates without the poll, I can see them getting a little lost, but then I bring the poll and say, okay, now you vote and tell me what do you think is better? And then they go and vote, right? And then I, later we'll see the results. So, so it helps to keep them engaged and they like it. So, okay, good. Okay, thanks. Thanks for your questions. Thanks for coming. Thank <laughs>